Is my time already? Good. Good morning. Thank you so much for uh, inviting me here. It's an absolute honor. Three months ago when I received the call from the TEDx committee to come and, and speak here, I decided at that point in time that I was going to prepare for this talk with the same level of enthusiasm that me and I'm sure most of you guys devoted towards an important class assignment. Um, so last night I started, um, <laughs> I opened my laptop and after an hour of watching random stuff on YouTube, I decided that it was going nowhere. Uh, I said, you know, time to get down, get responsible. So I called up the TEDx organizing committee and asked them if I could be the last speaker for the day. Um, that didn't work. So it was back to my computer and then I said, you know what, I'll wake up at 5 a.m., my mind will be fresh, I'll get new ideas. So finally at 6.30 this morning, um, I opened my laptop. The first slide was easy. Uh, I've done this a couple times before where I've spoken about design, about engineering, about putting both of them together. Uh, today I'm not going to talk about that. Um, today I want to share with you a story, um, my story. I mean, we've heard of this, right? Uh, it was even introduced. I mean, to do anything, follow your passion, um, money is not everything. I mean, that's what's told to you day in, day out. Follow your passion, uh, money is not everything. Hold on to that thought. My story, it involves two guys, me and my friend, two young guys who are passionate about tinkering. It involves an idea and uh, I mean, actually it was the old monk first and then the idea. But anyway, um, the inspiration behind what I am doing and how it started was just to have fun. It was two guys passionate about tinkering, old monk and old phone and shoes. Um, and the first thing that came to our mind was, hey, our friend's asleep, why not take his shoes? Let's do something to it so that um, when he wakes up in the morning, he'll get a, you know, um, a shock or, or something that will just surprise him. Um, but the main point of this, looking back, is, I mean, having fun is just about as inspiring as it can get. I mean, just because you're having fun does not mean you can do something that has a serious consequence to it. Um, so yeah, we did that. Then the next day, you know, after the effects of the bottle of old, old monk, um, we got an idea, you know. Um, we said, you know what, we put that in school, but it didn't really, you know, startle anybody. It actually felt kind of good. It felt beautiful. It felt like, you know, somebody is just tapping you on your foot. It's not bad at all. Um, how can we use this? And then the first application into our mind uh, was for the visually challenged and mobility. I mean, it's according to the WHO, there are 285 million visually challenged individuals worldwide. 66 million of those live in India. I mean, unfortunately, we have the tag of, of being the blind capital of the world. Mobility is a huge thing. I mean, you can, there are a lot of studies that have, you know, that, that have been put out there that talk about the economic and social impact of the lack of mobility. Um, currently, there are very few options for visually challenged people to, to be mobile and to travel around. They have to depend on somebody to take them. I mean, nobody wants to be dependent. I mean, it's, uh, it, doesn't feel good for the person who, who is going and also for uh, the companion who is probably, you know, has to take leave from work or has to put his or her plans on hold. Nobody wants that. Um, there are some tools, a guide dog. Um, unfortunately, 
majority of the visually visually challenged population live in developing countries so guide dogs while a useful tool are really expensive uh, and i mean they are tough to maintain also because it's another uh, a, a living being that we have to take care of there is technology but the technology that exists um one where we feel it can be improved is it relies on providing audio feedback right now audio feedback um we think is distracting because visually challenged people rely heavily on their sense of hearing to get an idea of the surroundings the other technologies it's very clunky it's very obtrusive i mean nobody really wants to to, to stick out as having to use something we feel that technology should be integrated into your life without the hassle of being a device um it should be something that you experience but not necessarily something that you should see so we set out and we said why not build an assistive device that is intuitive i mean it should be natural it should be a natural extension of the human body uh i pranav's talk was kind of building into that on on the importance of it uh, being intuitive um it should be unobtrusive i mean it should it should just be a natural extension nobody should know that you're using it um and it must be affordable so we called that product of project of ours lecher which in hindi it means take me there and that's how we started um okay follow your passion so now we had this idea and we started working on it and at that time i was based in america i had, had been living there for the last 13 years my partner was working as a researcher at a big um, multinational company in bangalore and what did we do we both quit our jobs i left moved back to india and started making shoes um i mean this is how our first prototypes look like i mean we not only wanted to 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 um tackle navigation we wanted to tackle even orientation how do how can uh, a person orient themselves without having to take the assistance of anybody else and also obstacle detection how how does a person move from one place to another without you know um having some of um assistance in terms of detecting obstacles moving out of the way and and stuff like that so we started um, i mean that's us you know acting passionate i guess i don't know um building stuff this is what it 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 look like and along the way we tried the lv prasad i institute in hyderabad they are one of the leading i institutes uh, at least in asia if not the world to test our prototypes i mean so we were working hands on that's actually our first user group who who tried the shoes on and um this is our favorite picture because uh the, the the person in the picture his name is Sai Kiran and this is the first time he had independently walked an obstacle course um without the assistance of anyone so we were really really we were really kicked about it and you know we got back and like how can we make it better and all of that stuff money is not everything okay so now i mean we put our own money into it we are thing everything and we soon realized i mean that statement is the biggest load of bs that you will ever hear i mean um like chris anderson said um the speakers at edx reflect their opinion not the opinion of edx but this is what i believe i mean money is not everything but it's pretty darn important um it is the only thing that will allow you to continue do continue to do what you're doing i mean unless you have an unlimited source of of funds that you can you can you know keep fueling in i mean you need money and also it allows you to do a great job at what you're doing so if you want to build something make sure you build the best of its kind in the world to do that you need great people to work for you and great people cost money while money is not everything making money 
there's nothing wrong with it. How you decide to use it and how you decide to spend it, that's your problem. At the end of the day, you make money because you're adding value to something. And if you're adding value to something, you are helping something. And that's the bottom line. So, how do we make money? I mean, we started thinking about this. Okay? Now, this was the big thing because now here we are, we have this idea, we want to make this product that does all of these phenomenal things, which also, by the way, is expensive to manufacture because you want to make a world class product and this is the first of its product, first of its kind in the world and for us low cost does not mean low quality. It has to be the best of its kind in the world. So you want to make it, it costs money at the same time you want to make it affordable so that everybody could, could use it. That's challenging, right? Because the last thing we wanted was for our product to be a boutique product where only the few who could afford it will use it and the rest, I mean, you know, no way. So we started thinking and then we realized, you know, along the way, wait a minute, I mean, we made these shoes for the visually impaired, but you know what? Why should it only be for the visually impaired? I mean, we were trying our prototypes and we were thinking, what if I go to a new city, I cannot hold my phone and, you know, walk around. What if I just set a destination, put it back in my pocket and walk as if I belong to that city? Nobody would even know, right? What if I'm on a bike, on a cycle, I have no option for a GPS device. I mean, audio, it's, the environment is too noisy. What about that? What if you like to trek? What if you can just walk, make your own path, share it with your friends, let them follow you, count your calories, track your steps, connect it with your Xbox, use it when you're playing FIFA? I mean, what about all of that? And then we said, hey, wait a minute, you know, as crazy as this sounds, it can work. I mean, don't be afraid to venture into something that's crazy. Okay? If you believe in it, I mean, give it a shot. So then we started thinking, okay, why not let's make this a lifestyle product. Let's make it about fashion. Let's make it about design. Let us get all of these together. Let us show people what they can do with it. Let us give them an, op an opportunity to explore. I mean, it's a platform. Do what you want to do. Build your own apps. Do whatever you want. And then we got into it and believe it or not, it was at that point we changed our business model is when we got fund investors to come in. Um, that happened and after that, I mean, this is what we made. It's footwear that I mean, I would want to own, um, and then it does all of these things that we just spoke about, and then we looked at it, how can we make it better? How can we make it better? So it's like, hey, you know, why not make something that's just a few mm thick, that does the same thing, but can get, that can flip into any shoe. So we made insoles. So we made shoes, we made insoles, and, you know, that's how we started. But we got to this point by questioning. We got to this point by challenging a certain norms that people always tell us to follow. I mean, um, that's what it looks like. And yes, what about the helping people part? I mean, that is important. Uh, that's core to why at least I do what I do, but this is what happened after that. We, the same shoes, the same footwear that can be used by all of us to do 100 different things can also be used by the visually challenged to help them with mobility. And this is not the first time. A lot of great technologies that we use today started out as applications for the physically disabled. I mean, whether it's Siri or whether it's the phonograph or whether it's Google Translate, I mean, all of these started out originally as applications towards catering for people with certain types of disabilities. And our product is no different. It's the same product, one product for whoever is using it. And then we take it one step better. How do we make something that without compromising on quality, Without doing any of that, how can we make it affordable to people who need it? 
And what we did was we tied up with the LV Prasad I Institute and we started something called the Lajal Initiative. So for every pair of our footwear that is sold, we will subsidize the cost of the same footwear for a visually challenged person anywhere in the world through institutes like the LV Prasad I We are starting off with a 30 to 50 percent subsidy but our ultimate vision is to get it down so that a person can get access to these shoes or insoles or whatever we make for one dollar. I mean I don't believe in giving anything for free but I believe in making things affordable and I believe that people should have the pleasure of buying things for themselves. So that's what we're doing. So over here it's kind of I mean a win-win for, for uh, all the situations, for all scenarios. I mean how did we get there? Follow your passion really. I mean coming to think of it today, maybe if you spoke to me three years back I would have said yes, I left everything because I wanted to follow my passion. But um, I think that's pretty dangerous advice. I mean I would like to stop one step short of telling you don't follow your passion. But um, there are a lot of things that go with it. I mean it, it, it assumes that you already know what your passion is. Uh, which may not be the case, your passion changes. I mean, when I started, you know, I was passionate about tinkering. I was passionate about, you know, breaking things apart, putting them together, just doing stuff like that. Today, I run a company. I mean, I don't do tinkering, but I'm doing a hundred different things. But I am very passionate about it. I am very passionate about, you know, building products, getting them into the market, seeing people using them, uh, I mean, all of the things that come with, with you know, uh, building and, and, and running a company, that's something that I discovered along the way. I mean, you can have multiple passions. What do you do then? Um, the only thing I can say is, you know, just be passionate about what you're working on. I mean, that is more important than, than anything else. And instead, you can try this. Instead of trying to find your passion, Find a problem to solve. Okay. Have have fun solving it. That's that's fine, guys. I'm I'm almost done. Find a problem to solve. Have fun solving it, and help people. And if you can do all of this, I mean, you will truly unlock the doors to infinite possibilities. So, guys, that's my idea. Thank you so much for for this.